Through this presentation, I will try to give a general idea about uh, what is a solar cooker and uh, I will do a heat transfer analysis on two main types of solar cookers to conclude which will be best for uh, home and personal use. First, we will start by uh, giving a brief outline of the presentation. First, I will in introduce the subject and why I chose this specific subject. Then, I will define solar cookers. And after that, I will give uh, some properties of two main types of solar cookers, which are the solar box cooker and the parabolic uh, solar cooker. Then, I will do the heat transfer analysis to come up with the efficiencies of each one of those uh, solar cookers. Then, I will, uh, at the end, I will discuss the results obtained. So, to introduce the subject, I will say that global warming is uh, the biggest issue nowadays and it's mainly due to the raise in the carbon dioxide levels uh, on Earth. And I think that the solar cookers could help significantly reduce the emission of CO2 by using uh, sun radiations instead of uh, fuel and gas. And uh, in this presentation, I will talk about the different about different types of solar cookers, mainly two, and recommend one one of them after uh, the heat transfer uh, analysis. So the definition of a solar cooker. What do we mean when we say a solar cooker? So a solar cooker is a device that creates heat from sun rays, which means that it's a device that takes uh, sun radiations and uh, transforms them into heat. Uh, this heat could be used to cook uh, any types of food. It could be uh, the solar cookers could be homemade or manufactured as uh, we will see later in the presentation. Uh, there are mainly two types of uh, solar cookers even if we can find uh, like uh, a lot of uh, designs because they are uh, handcrafted so, um, but in this presentation, I will talk about the most used designs, which are the solar box cooker and uh, the parabolic solar cooker. The solar box cooker, uh, it's a device that consists of five main parts, as we can see in the picture. We have a reflective lid, which uh, reflects the sun's radiations into the box, a top cover, that is made of a transparent material. Um, usually we use glass uh, so that we can create a greenhouse effect on the box and, uh, and therefore we can trap the heat inside the box. We will, we will need uh, some insulation material to keep the box heated from inside, to keep the heat from going outside of the box, from the walls and the floor of the box. Then we will need a flat plate collector, which will be at the bottom of the pan or the pot that we will use. And at the end, we will uh, for sure use a cooking pan or pot so that it uh, so that we can uh, uh, heat our food. The advantages and disadvantages of uh, this design. First, we will start by giving the advantages. Uh, it can cook multiple pots simultaneously. Uh, depending on the size of the box, uh, it is easy to build and uh, we can use uh, some simple materials to build it. It can be used as an oven to bake cakes and uh, bread. And uh, now we will talk about the disadvantages of the solar box cooker. It doesn't reach high temperature, so it cannot be used to fry or uh, grill foods. It can damage the pan or pot because uh, uh, the because of the heat because the heat is not evenly distributed inside the box. It may require to be tilted to follow the sun, and this is uh, mainly because of its uh, its uh, special design. Now we will talk about the parabolic solar cooker. The parabolic solar cooker uses a slightly different principle than the solar box cooker as it does not create uh, the uh, greenhouse effect. It only 
reflects the sun radiations into the pan or the pot to create enough heat to uh, cook food. It contains only two major components, a parabolic reflector that catches the sun rays and uh, reflects them, and a food container that, contains our, that can contain our food. The advantages and disadvantages of the parabolic design uh, will be as follows. We'll start by the advantages. The parabolic cooker takes less time to cook food. Uh, it, it actually takes the same time as a, a gas uh, burner, so it's very convenient. It can reach high temperature, so it can be used to fry and grill foods. The disadvantages of the parabolic solar cooker it contains, uh, it requires constant readjustment to the sun, and uh, the technology is a little bit expensive to build as it, it's very difficult to handcraft uh, a parabolic uh, solar cooker. The thermal efficiency of the solar cookers. We will start by the solar box cooker. We will first calculate the heat loss from the walls of the box. First, uh, we will start by the heat loss by convection. We will use the famous formula, which is uh, Q of Q conduction is equal to T1 minus T2 over the resistance of the walls, with the, the resistance is equal to uh, R radiation times R convection over R radiation plus R convection, as they are in uh, parallel. Heat loss by radiation, which will be computed by uh, the following formula. Uh, during this analysis, I found uh, very useful calculations that, will, that were done by uh, Pijak. Uh, so Pijak, Dr. Pijak cal calculated the temperatures inside the box as a function of thermal resistance for different solar fluxes. Uh, 900, 1000, and 1100 watt per meter squared. The following graph shows the result he obtained. So from the graph we can see that as the ter thermal resistance goes up, the temperatures rise. And this is exactly in uh, coherence with the previous uh, formula. Now we will try to estimate the efficiency of the solar box. Calculating the exact efficiency turned out to be a very hard task as it depends on multiple vari variables uh, such as uh, the dimensions, the heat gains, the heat losses, and the sun's radiations. But I found two sources that estimated the thermal efficiencies of solar boxes based on different uh, experiments. The first one said that the efficiency ranges from 20% to 50% depending on the uh, different variables and the second one said that the efficiency is around 20% so for the sake of the comparison with the parabolic uh, solar cooker we will take a value which is between 20% and 35% now we will try to calculate the efficiency of a parabolic solar cooker in this slide I included only the equations not the exact values so that uh, it will not take uh, a lot of time to explain the values, but I um, but I included the values in the paper. So in these calculations, we took a standard parabolic solar cooker that could be used for home usage with the normal uh, surface area. First, we calculated the power generated by this device using the following formula. P is equal to M times CP times delta T over delta time. Second, we calculated the surface area of the parabola using the, the equation A is equal to P over HAV times epsilon. Finally, we will have all the variables necessary to calculate the efficiency using the formula efficiency is equal to P over delta time times A times HAV. And then after the, doing all the calculations, we get an efficiency equal to 19%. So after doing this uh, heat transfer 
analysis on both of the of the designs we can conclude that the best option for a solar cooker is the solar box cooker due to its efficiency and low cost in this comparison we took, we took a normally sized parabolic cooker but we can also can calculate the efficiency for a bigger cooker and the results will be very different but the cost will be much higher uh, knowing that a regular parabolic cooker can cost up to up to six hundred dollars we can say that the solar box is a better option as it can be easily crafted uh, at home using uh, for example the simplest one can be uh, crafted using a pizza box and uh, we can we can uh, easily access tutorials to do so on uh, YouTube thank you for the for your attention